Colligative properties depend on the number, not identity of solute particles in an ideal solution. Examples would include boiling point elevation and freezing point depression. Boiling point elevation is exemplified by this equation, delta T equals KB times M solute. Delta T refers to the boiling point elevation, how much higher our boiling point is going to be if we add a solute. KB is going to refer to the molal boiling point elevation constant, and the constant is going to be dependent on the type of solvent you're using. M solute refers to the molality of the solute in the solvent, and that's going to be represented by moles of solute, or the mass of the solvent, in kilograms. So let's assume we have an example problem. We dissolve 18 grams of glucose in 150 grams of water. Now, this results in a new boiling point, an elevated boiling point of 100.34 degrees Celsius at one atmospheric pressure. Right now, we want to calculate the molar mass of glucose. We're also given the Kb, which is 0.51. So right now, we can find delta T right off the bat, because we know that the new boiling point is 100.34, and we know that water typically boils at 100 degrees Celsius. So 100.34 minus 100 degrees Celsius, that's going to equal to new uh, boiling point elevation of 0.34 degrees Celsius. So we take our equation, plug and chug. We were just calculated, we just calculated 0.34 degrees Celsius. We just um, were given the Kb value and we're trying to find M solute in this case and that's going to help us find the molar mass of glucose. So rearrange everything together, M solute would equal 0.67 moles per kilogram. Now we take our M solute and we apply the definition of what molality is, moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. So we have our value that we calculated, 0.67, applied to the moles of um, solute, which in this case would be glucose, and over the kilograms of solvent, because we have 150 grams of water, it should be 0.15 kilograms of H2O. So if we cross multiply that, we should get 0.67 times 0.15, and that's going to equal to 0 0.10 moles of glucose. Now, we know the moles of glucose now, and we were given the grams of glucose used. So we can put the grams over the moles, and that's going to equal out to our molar mass, 180. If we want to talk about freezing point depression, it's basically just adding a solute, having it dissolve, and the result is H2O having a lower vapor pressure than pure ice, which, of course, ends up with a lower freezing point. This is exemplified by this equation, delta T equals Kf, times M solute. Delta T refers to the freezing point depression, how much lower our freezing point is going to be once we add a solute. Kf refers to the molal freezing point depression constant, which is again going to be dependent on the solvent. And M solute refers to the molality of the solute. Let's have an example problem. We have ethylene glycol, C2H6O2, added to 10 liters of water. Now, ethylene glycol is part of antifreeze, so our new solution is now going to freeze at negative 23.3 degrees Celsius instead of the typical 0 degrees Celsius that water freezes at. So right now, we want to find the mass of ethylene glycol added. We're also given the Kf, and also we can assume that the density of water is 1 gram per milliliter. So here's where we sometimes get into a bit of confusion, because we have to define delta T. Now some people in some books define delta T as temperature of the solution minus temperature of pure solvent, which in some cases is just uh, T final minus T naught. But the problem is, because it's freezing point depression, delta T is going to come out as negative instead of positive. So because delta T is negative in this case, Kf would also be negative. So instead of the Kf being 1.86, it's actually going to be negative 1.86 instead. But overall, the result should be the same, because when you plug it into your delta T equation, and you're trying to find M solute, everything should cancel out, because, of course, M solute can't be uh, negative. 
So just use your common sense when you're given the kf value. If it's negative, that means it's going to apply to this definition of delta t. But of course, some other books say that delta t refers to the magnitude of the freezing point of depression. Now, because delta t is now positive, let's say we go from um, 0 degrees Celsius to negative 23.3 degree, 23 degrees Celsius, the magnitude is just going to be 23.3 degrees Celsius because that's positive. Kf is also going to be positive as we were given. So from this, we just apply it to our delta t equation, plug and chug, and we want to find our m solute. m solute in this case would be 12.5 moles per kilogram. Now, because we assume that the density of water is 1 gram per milliliter, we can just say that one kilogram would actually just equal one liter. Now we were given 10 liters of H2O, right? And that in reality would just be 10 kilograms of H2O. We were also given the chemical formula of C2H6O2. Now if we want to find the molar mass, we just add all that up, put it into grams over mole, and we have 62.1. Now because we were given the moles, we were given the molar mass, and just multiply those two together, units cancel out, and we're just left with grams, 7.76 times 10 to the third grams. And that's going to be how much um, ethylene glycol we have. So, in review, we just calculated, or rather we just applied delta T equations for boiling point elevation and freezing point depression.